blessed day to you. And I shall say welcome to our daily manna. Just as our physical body is in need of material food, so as our soul is in need of the word of the Lord. To begin with, shall we bow down our heads for prayer? Our loving God and gracious Heavenly Father, here is another day that you have given to us to live this life honoring you and becoming a good steward in every aspect of our being. And right now, as we ponder upon your word, may you open our hearts and minds and allow us to understand the truth that you have in store for us and that this truth shall be applied in our day-to-day -day living. We entrust to you our time together. Speak to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I would like to start relating a story written by Frank Bayola in his book entitled Eternit from, from Eternity to Here. I would like to read it to you so that I won't miss any portion of it. The story goes like this. Billy is a seven-year-old boy who loves to draw pictures, but he's not your typical seven-year-old who likes to draw. He has an unmatched talent as an artist. The pictures he sketches are riveting. Billy's parents are highly moralistic. They are also coldly disengaged from their son's talent. They fear that Billy will grow up very prideful over his unique talent as an artist. Plus, forging a career as an artist is not a noble goal in their eyes. So Billy's parents tell him that his drawings are not very good and that he should stop drawing. So he does. Billy lays down his crayons, his colored pencils, and his markers. Ten years pass, and Billy is a high school student. He takes health as one of his electives. One day, his teacher gives her students an exercise in projective personality test. Each student must draw a picture depicting the happiest moment in his or her life and the saddest moment. To, surprise, to his surprise, Billy finds himself doing something that he hasn't done in 10 years. He begins to draw pictures. Upon finishing his pictures, four students who are sitting nearby take a peek at the product of his pen. They are aghast. They blurt out, My goodness, Billy! My goodness, Billy! That's awesome! Wow! You have a real gift, man! Billy is shocked. He suspects that they are poking fun at him. Yeah, yeah, right, they said, and he retorts. I know I can draw, so save the sarcasm. One of the four students waves the teacher over, saying, You gotta get over here and see this. As the teacher walks over to Billy's desk, her eyes widen. She says to the young man, Billy, these are the most incredible drawings I've ever seen. You really have a talent. Have you considered taking art class? Still, Billy has a hard time believing what he is hearing. Why? Because for the last decade, his parents, his parents have told him that he cannot draw well. Yet the reality all along was that Billy was a gifted artist. But that's not how he perceived himself. The lie was easy to believe because it was repeatedly told to him by those who expected to tell the truth. This is a sad story of, about Billy. You know, as I was thinking about this matter, Christians, like Billy's parents, are the ones who are expected to tell the truth. But it is alarming to think about this matter today because it has been, become a practice even in the midst of believers to tell a lie. No wonder Paul was really very clear in his instruction saying in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 25, Therefore, 
laying aside falsehood, he said, Speak truth, each one of you. Speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Paul was urging the believers to speak truth, laying aside falsehood. Why? Because lies was lying was rampant even in those days and even in our time today. Somehow, if we discuss about this matter about lying, sometimes it's hard to distinguish already between a Christian and unbeliever. Why? Because it became a norm, not only outside the church, but even inside the church. This is the truth that I want all of us to take note this very day. Truth shall reign in the body of Christ. And the premise of Paul when he stated this is found in the earlier verses, looking at verses 20 to 24. The truth is in Jesus. If the message we receive and the message we have believed is from the Lord, then the manner of life we live today shall also exemplify truth. We are in Christ, who is the wellspring of truth. We are in Christ, who is truth himself. And that is the very nature of God. And thereby, our way of living in this day shall also exemplify truth. If I were to urge you to stay away from lies, I may bring your thoughts to the concept of retribution. Lies is an awful ma ma manner. Lying, I mean, is an awful manner and it has awful consequences. In in the website of the University of Rochester, they mention this, lying has consequences. And when someone finds out that you have lied, it affects how that person deals with you forever. Lying really has awful consequences, not only inside the church, within your family, with your relationship with your spouse, with your children, with your parents, in your office, in your school, wherever you may be, lying has an awful consequences. It destroys relationship. It brings, uh, what is this, destruction. It brings separation to individuals. And that is why today, the advice of the, word to, of the Lord to all of us, truth shall reign in the body of Christ. Now, instead of thinking about someone else that had lied to you, I am inviting you to an introspection this very moment. Ask yourself, how am I? Do I uphold the truth in my life and set aside falsehood? Only you can answer this question. And I am praying that the Lord will continue to convict you and lead you to all the truth and to tell the truth in love. God bless you all.